next guest first claimed her seat at the table in the 90s and remained the most successful girl group of all time. You've known her best as Sporty Spice, one-fifth of the British pop music titans, the Spice Girls, <laughs> along with her bandmates Ginger, Posh, Baby, and Scary Spice. The Spice Girls became a pop culture phenomenon when their first single, Wannabe, shot to number one in 37 countries for two years. Spice Mania took over the world. Their meteoric rise led to 100 million albums sold and generations of fans, including me. In 1999, the sporty one ditched her tomboy image. Melanie Chisholm went by Mel C or Melanie C, embarking on a successful solo career, resulting in two number one singles and selling 20 million albums on her own. And now nearly 30 years after reaching global stardom, at 48 years old, Melanie C is pulling back the curtain, showing us what her life was really like in Spice World. In her new powerful memoir, The Sporty One, My Life as a Spice Girl, Melanie C is revealing the pressures of fame, the real relationship between the women, and some deeply personal and painful stories in the hopes of healing and helping others. Please welcome to the TAM fam, Melanie C. I have to, I mean, I, one of my fondest memories, I looked for pictures and I couldn't find them, I was so frustrated. You all on your British bus going through Chicago, I just started reporting in Chicago and it was my big assignment to cover the Spice Girls coming to Chicago on their American tour. I mean, when you look back at this, this life, the seat at the table, it extends to all of the pop groups now. Oh, you know, it was such an incredible time and we feel really lucky because it felt like something was bubbling under anyway. Yeah. You know, and we, we got into music because we loved performing and we wanted to be famous, we wanted to travel the world. We didn't think about girl power and equality, but quite quickly we hit sexism in the industry. You know, we were told girl pop bands don't sell. Really? Yeah. Who, oh, yeah. Who are those wrong people? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we had to prove them wrong. So we feel very grateful to yeah. the, those people. It was the music industry back in the UK. They were saying, you know, it's about boy bands. You know, we were following new kids on the block yeah. and take that over in the UK. So there hadn't really been a big female pop band. So you're, you're processing the impact. You start to write this memoir mm -hmm. and then you start to reveal these stories. You're performing and behind the scenes, there are people pulling the strings, telling you what to eat, who you can date what to wear, you had no control. Yeah, you know, I think with hindsight, you know, I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, we were well looked after in a sense, but in another sense, I think, and at that time as well, there was no support. You know, there was no support for your mental health. Mm -hmm. There was really no thought. I think this happens a lot with young people who find themselves successful. And, you know, history has shown us, you almost lose that sense of being a human being. You know, your schedules are punishing. Yeah. And you know, with, within the band, it was different rules for different people. And you know, I wasn't told I couldn't date, but it was strongly advised that I was, you know, how do they, I was yeah. a bit too vulnerable to, yeah. to have a relationship. But you know what? Yeah, they were probably right, but it wasn't helpful at the time. It wasn't helpful for my state of mind. So they were strongly suggesting things they thought were helpful mm -hmm. for the band and for the group. And for me as an individual, you, but, you know, individual. I was developing an eating disorder yeah. and I started to exercise obsessively. And this, you know, one of the contributing factors to this was the very first management team we worked with, someone made a throwaway comment about the size of my thighs. And it and was meant like to be pencil thin. like and a little athletic joke. body type. You've got, you're, you're slim, you have an aspirational body for most girls because it was an athlete, that's why you were the sporty one. But then uh, someone comments on your thighs. Yeah, and that just kind of is a bit of a trigger for me, you know, so I started to be more conscious because I thought, this is my ultimate dream, to be a pop star, to work in music. If I don't look right, I can change that. Yeah. What made you write the book now? Because it's hard, memoirs are oh. tough because you have to go into some dark, spaces to reveal the whole story. Absolutely, and for a long time, I thought I wouldn't do it. 
And those shows in 2019, just really seeing that incredible response from everybody. And I think also that those shows for me, it helped me accept all these aspects of myself yeah. because I thought Sporty was this like, person I became yeah. and I realized well she's always in there there's no escaping yeah. her you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I talked about when you write a memoir so many people take that opportunity to deal with trauma mm. and memories that you want to forget you talked about I never knew this until reading your book of a sexual assault that happened um, the night before the Spice Girls had their first concert of 1997 you were in Turkey uh, it was at a hotel and you wrote, I felt violated, I felt very vulnerable, I felt embarrassed. You also wrote, I didn't want to make a fuss, but I also didn't have time to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it was buried for years and years, this trauma that you had experienced as a kid. Yeah, yeah. The part that got me so is when you said, I didn't want to make a fuss. And that's why I had to have it in the book, because for all these years, it's been buried. You know, there was, I had actually discussed it with my mum. I hadn't discussed it with my dad. When I was working on the book, I got close to finishing it. It hadn't even entered my mind. And it's such a huge event in your life. It's such a, a pivotal time. You know, we were about to go on stage the next night, our first ever big live show. And I was distracted and I had to get on with it and I had to carry on. And I wanted to put it in because I just think so many women have experiences and they think, you know, I don't want to make a fuss. I don't, what if I'm wrong? I don't want to look stupid. You know, oh, it's just me, I'm just being silly. And I just thought, no, that man has never been held accountable. Never. He, no, never. And he may have gone on to do that again, yeah. to do worse, you know? And yeah. I just, that's my biggest regret, is that I didn't, I didn't speak up and out then. So I would say to anyone, you, you have to, you have to speak out. <laughs> I'm always curious about this. What was it like for you to look out at that audience and know that you'd done it? Like, oh my gosh, all of these young women, <laughs> all the women of different ages are looking at me. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you're experiencing sexism, you're experiencing controlling managers, people telling you down to what to eat. Mm. Well, you know, it's, gosh, it was such an unprecedented thing that happened to us. And I think what's, what's so sad, really, looking back, you know, I don't want to take anything away from our time in the 90s, you know, Spice Mania through the late 90s, because it was incredible. We achieved our wildest dreams. But I think when you're in that, and I think young artists still experience this mm -hmm. today, you're so busy, you're so, like, trying to get to grips with this new world you're inhabiting that you can't take it in. Yeah. You know, we could look out over tens of thousands of people and go, wow, we did it, we made it. But it doesn't go in, it doesn't sink in. And I don't think it really did yeah. until 2019, myself and the other girls, or three of the other girls, Victoria wasn't with us on stage, but with us in spirit. And for the first time we went, wow, it started to sink in that impact we'd had not only on a generation of people, but new generations are still discovering the Spice Girls. When we come back, how Melanie C fought for her voice to not be silenced, and also for the voices of all of the fans around the world after the break. We are back with Melanie C, who is sharing her story in her new powerful memoir, The Sporty One, My Life as a Spice Girl. A big part of the storyline with the group was always, who's getting along with this one? And whenever there are more than two women in the room, we're always pitted against each other. We're always made to believe, as Iman talked about, one black model for a black model, that there's only one woman who can be in the room. Mm -hmm. That's the star. Mm -hmm. I was even looking at recent headlines with Victoria Beckham Posh, and her son just got married, and there's a headline about his wife not getting along with her. There's always an undercurrent, and you all saw it as a group, of women having to not get along with women. Yeah. What was that like for you, and what is that like for you even now, seeing her in the headlines pitted against her daughter-in-law? Yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, what frustrates me is that, you know, people say to me, oh, do you think it's changed? And I go, I don't think it's changed. I think it's changing. You know, 
The UK tabloid media have a terrible reputation and they were brutal and they were cruel. But I think this whole thing like women against women, like, yeah, women can't support each other. Women can't really be friends. I mean, you know, that's because men are friend friends of us and what we're capable of, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, the Spice Girls, of course we had our fallouts. You know, we're people, people fall out. Who yeah. cares what gender you identify as? We fall out with our families, you know? but you get back together. Yeah. Or you... It's completely natural. But yeah, that was something we, solidarity, you know, coming together, we celebrate our individuality, but together we are powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's what we always wanted to project. Did you let them know that you were writing the memoir? Yeah. yeah, you let them all know oh, you're writing yeah, them more. Yeah, the girls have been amazing. I was, I was nervous, and I think anyone's nervous. You know, when you know somebody quite intimately, and like they're going to write a book, you're like, uh oh. You're like, what are you going to tell? <laughs> yeah. Which bits are you going to put in, and which bits are you going to leave out? So I did tell all of the girls, and they've been very supportive. Mel B was really helpful. She was like filling in little gaps because my memory's gone a little bit. <laughs> so, so that was really fun, and yeah, they've they've been great throughout the whole process. Okay, before I let you go, because we have people wearing Spice World and Spice Girl t-shirts in here. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I have to tell you, there was a mob, a <laughs> mob of fans outside of my studio. Will you ever tour again together? I hope so, I hope so. We are talking constantly about that. It's 25 years since Spice World, the movie yeah, and yeah. the album this year. And What's we would the hold love to get back up? on What's stage. The you know, it's getting everyone in the right place at the right time. Because your mom's now, you got yeah. everything. So much going on. So but we, we want to, and I believe that's all you need. If we want to, we'll make it happen. Okay, but you want it. I do. You do. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Always. <Yeah. laughs> Melanie's memoir, The 41, My Life as a Spice Girl, is in stores now. Melanie, thank you so much. Congratulations on having the power to be open and tell your story in your voice. Thank you so much.